I have a character that I do. Uh, let's see. I'm embarrassed. I'll do it later. Just, oh, you're just going to break into it at some point. That's the break. Because we got to take leaks. All right, let's go mm-hmm. take leaks. I pissed before. Wait, he just did the character. Oh, shit, I missed it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, it's that guy. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an older gentleman. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're an older gentleman? Yeah. Here. Met you when I used to. Remember, I used to babysit you. <laughs> oh my God! So Holy funny. shit! Okay, I'm, I'm gonna be 58 years old in March. 57 years young. And we used to play put the spider in the bikini. And I tell you, there was spider in your bikini, and you'd pull off your bikini shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I used to babysit you. Remember, we used to go in a swimming pool. And play that game, kiss the eel for a chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> it was kiss the eel for a chocolate bar. That <laughs> fucking voice is too creepy, <laughs> man. Close your eyes and listen to right. it. I swear to God, I, I feel like someone else is a different guy. Yeah. Such a good girl. <laughs> you know, when I was your age, we'd go out for a malted gentleman, would pick up a girl, take her out. I used to bounce you on my knee when you was a little kid. Your father got really mad at me. <laughs> that was too, too good. That was, I like that one. Somebody it's, left. Huh? Somebody left before I didn't see him. You didn't yeah. see the old guy? I just saw somebody walking away. Yeah, Did no. he look about, uh, I don't know, like he's 58 years old? No. I heard some guy talking. No. I and, can tell um, you're not uh, being sincere because you don't know what to do with your hands right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that... What he said was, that's not the way he talks. He said, uh, I'm 58 years young. 57, actually. I'll be 58 in March. I used to babysit you. I worked with your father and I got fired. I had a, a niece who was a bit of a tattletale. <laughs> she was two years old and she made up allegations about what I would do when I was babysitting. <laughs> God, I can't even look at him. I know. It, it's it's really creepy because the voice doesn't sound like him. Not at all. I remember when you was a little girl. You, <laughs> maybe you was nine or ten and you come to me and you says, Uncle Paul, I got hairs growing in down here. <laughs> I explained to you that your body was changing. <laughs> Uh, you are awful. You can't even hear like Jim Norton in there at all. No. Uh, oh. Do you go Wait, to another you... place when that voice starts? No. Wait. <laughs> Jimmy, I love it. <laughs> the greatest character ever, people are saying. <laughs> Old creepy guy, Paul. Uncle Paul. Uncle Paul. His name's Uncle Paul. He's not a real uncle. He's a friend of the family uncle. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Quite. He's not blood. <laughs> no. no. Well, a little at first. <laughs> it's natural. Everybody bleeds the first couple of times. Don't let that upset you. It's okay. Oh. This is the voice that a therapist gets out of him on a couch after they hypnotize oh. you. What the fuck, Jimmy? What? It was Uncle Paul. He's trying to comfort someone as he sings in their ear. Happy fourth birthday to you. <laughs> Uncle Paul. <laughs> Uncle Did, Paul's a ghoul. You know how old he is? 58. Yeah. No. 57. No? 57 years young. Years young. Oh, what a creep. Is he married? My wife was killed in a fire. <laughs> I got an insurance settlement. <laughs> settlement. <laughs> settlement. <laughs> she was burned over 92% of her body. I took care of her for seven years. I never stopped making love. <laughs> Holy crap, oh, okay. Jimmy. It's really it's, good it's and creepy. creepy. It's, 
Yeah, it's right. too creepy. Oh, Jesus, Jimmy. <laughs> that I'm is sorry. A bad one. I didn't think it would be bad. Gets, oh, it is really bad. Uncle Paul voice. That's Uncle Paul's. He's got a little Uncle Paul really stinks. Yeah, Uncle Paul is colon cancer. Smelling <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Paul's colostomy bag. <laughs> I got a bad diet. Yeah, what's wrong, Uncle Paul? I eat a lot of potato chips. <laughs> Why potato chips? Kids like potato chips. Yeah. Yeah, bounce it on my knee. Give you some potato chips. <laughs> Kiss you in the back of the neck. Oh, good to see you. You know, I really didn't enjoy that uh, that airplane ride. First class is very overrated. And what did Why? you like about Uncle Paul? I love it. They didn't have any of the drinks I wanted. My favorite drink they didn't have. And what's that? I like warm papaya juice in a can. <laughs> I don't think they would have that. Small, thin can of warm papaya juice. So you were a fan of the Shirley Temple? No. No? No. Why not? I don't like it. No? He's the creepiest guy ever in the in the airport. He's sitting there and <sighs> looking at small children that are running by and giving them little names. Yeah. There was a blonde kid that I leaned over my girlfriend and I went, look at TJ. He loves to play. TJ. <laughs> and, and what was the other one's name? Anthony. Anthony. He was heavy and fat, little tiny. Jay and Anthony. And she, she said I was whispering to her on the plane as Uncle Paul. I forget what I said. And she said, you know, that makes me physically sick when you do that. <laughs> yeah. She was really getting disgusted with she you. She couldn't even play along anymore. That fucking I'll flirt back with him shit went out the window as I knew it would. Yeah, that went out the window. Of course it would. You always got to find the one point. Well, she hates when he laughs. Like when he says something like racing laughs. <laughs> yeah, like... I, we would play strip poker, but I would always fix the deck. <laughs> a father who killed a man trying to sexually assault his daughter. Oh, yeah. Good for that fucking father, man. Four-year-old daughter. Right. There was a, a guest in his house, I guess. Uh, now, the story says guy. trying to molest. You're saying it was... Oh, well, from what I read, it seemed like he was, you know, molesting. Completely in. Well, whatever. Completely in. Completely <laughs> in on the oh molestation, if you know what I mean. God, I hope he doesn't do jail time. I do. Texas father has not been arrested, has not been arrested, and is unlikely to face charges. Fucking A. He yeah. should go to jail. Oh, Jesus, Uncle That's Paul. unnecessary. He no. should have talked it over. What did she say? What was her part in it? <laughs> you don't just go beating people up. They may have been in a relationship like Romeo oh and Juliet. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Maybe they were going to elope or something. You don't go beating people up for being in love. <laughs> that father needs to go to jail and be punished. The father. So you're saying the father deserves to be punished now. Yeah, he interfered with that relationship. What if it wasn't a relationship? Sure it was. They was uh, getting oh, to know nice. each other. Oh, this, this makes it much better. Yeah. Uh, oh, how are you, my darling? <laughs> she was four. Hello. Uncle Paul, she was four. Sure, that's what I'm saying. She's <laughs> ready to travel. Travel? Uh, you're going to elope. Like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> of course. It's Romeo. a beautiful love story. And then the father comes in <laughs> and starts yelling. Oh, what are you doing, Paul? Get that out of there between the crib bars. <laughs> <laughs> she's going... <laughs> <laughs> she's go she's go <laughs> no, 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 no. She's no, no, no. get that out of the crib boss. <laughs> she no. She's going at it. She's going at it like like a gerbil going after the little water bottle. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, everybody's gotta yell at you. <laughs> No reason for that. <laughs> Why don't you just talk things over? Hey, what are you doing? Are hey. you both, is everybody okay with this? Sure. sure. Tell the father to get out of here. <laughs> Went there and watch the TV. We're making love. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uncle Paul, that uh, is disgusting. Despicable. It's not despicable. Oh. And then my friend Jerry's in trouble. Uh, Jerry Sandusky? Sure, 
Yeah, we used to get together and play the old frickle frackle. Frickle frackle. Yeah, that's where you put like all the soapy suds on your penis. Yeah. And you move your hips like a hula hoop, <laughs> and the water's splashing the boy in the face, and he's getting frickle frackled. <laughs> Never heard of. Sure, I mean, the suds are flying off his cheek and everybody's laughing. Like the Sandusky soap fights that we heard about from victim number four? Yeah, we'd have all suds. Four was a bummer. Five and six were fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd do the old frickle frackle. Why do you think they're calling them victims if they were uh, willing participants? His name is Victor, is it? Oh, no, it's Victor. Oh, I didn't hear that. Good. But you thought all their names were Victor? Yeah, Victor four, <laughs> Victor five. <laughs> <laughs> You put you put all the soapy suds on your peenie, and then you slap the cheek while the water's splashing, and it looks like slow motion of the dog shaking the soap off him. You give him the old frickle frackle. <laughs> well, God damn uh, tattletales. He's he's in Dutch, huh? Hmm. Quite a, a jam. Hope that father gets in big trouble for beating up that lady's boyfriend. <laughs> lady. <laughs> like four She's years four. old. Uh, uh, people are saying you got to mention it was in Texas. Of course. Yeah, Texas. They certainly have their own law in Texas. Yeah, they're they ruthless. over the years. They like, don't treat you nice down there. They don't fuck around. Yeah. With yeah. Bullshit. They kept thinking I was riding a, 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 a file bike or something. They thought I kept oh, riding no. it away. I don't know. <laughs> they was yelling at me. Right. A file bike. Yeah, who's Megan Slaw? <laughs> Megan Slaw. I don't know who she is. A file bike. <laughs> oh, my God. They kept saying, this Slaw girl, Megan Slaw. I don't know her. I think it's Megan's Law. I, no, Megan Slaw. Megan they were yelling Slaw. at me. I'm like, I never met the lady. Yeah. I don't know who she is. Lady. And they were saying... Pedophile. They weren't saying pedal file <laughs> to pedal oh. your your file bike. Oh, you know? of course. See, I don't <laughs> get that out of the <laughs> get that out of the crib, Paul. She's she's slipping and slapping at it with her little hands. <laughs> no. Quit poking that between the crib bars. Oh, uh, God damn. That guy should get in big trouble uh, interfering with a married couple like that. Married. Sure they were. Four-year-olds can't get married. Yeah, they can. His old balls hanging over the crib like a mobile. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Just because you don't know how to make a smile and giggle, and I do. Right. When they hang over there, when the sack hangs over, and they go, ah, ha, ha, and they, they slap at it like it's a toy and such. <laughs> yeah, they just slap at it with both hands, and everybody laughs. Uh, oh, you are fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Texas sure has a way of yes, they do. delivering care of their, their own justice. I like the cop as it goes in there. and Well, case closed. I love it. Last track was a, a disc jockey by the name of Mad Daddy. And he was just uh, sure. 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 I ain't mad. I'm just yeah. frustrated. <laughs> this, I mean, this guy is just... I'm all full. Entertainment like all the way. He's plump crazy. hot dog. <laughs> I ain't mad. <laughs> I just got to have the hot dog juice drained out. Uh, okay. Then I'll yeah, be sure sleepy, know. daddy. <laughs> <laughs> One time I fell asleep with a ciggy in my mouth. Oh. I had cummy all over my belly and my boxes. Cummy. And there I was. Hurt my back being all asleep with a ciggy crumped over the crib. It's just, it's just no reason for it. <laughs> oh, God. Here's a Mad Daddy or mad something daddy, like that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. God, do people love Ted? They do like him. I, oh, they I, just love bit. Ted Sheckler. I can't tell. <laughs> oh, Uncle Paul. Ted's a weird boy. <laughs> oh, no, Ted's fine. A you're a little. You're a little weird. Why don't you go to Devil's Creek? Yeah, I have a feeling Uncle Paul <laughs> lives in Devil's Creek. <laughs> Ted talks a lot. He's a tattletale. Oh, he's a big time tattletale. I remember Mr. and Mrs. Sheckler asked me to watch him. 
<laughs> I told all these lies about what I did to him. I don't like Uncle Paul. He's creepy. Why don't you like him? I don't remember much, Gregory. <laughs> all I remember is he called me into the room, and I felt the pillow on my face. And then I woke up, I was in a hospital. I think I <laughs> fell. <laughs> That's what mother told you. <laughs> mother told me I fell down and landed on something. A skate went into my hiney repeatedly. <laughs> Thank God Uncle Paul was there. He drove me. <laughs> oh, that's he did. wonderful. <laughs> drove me to the hospital. Imagine being molested by Uncle Paul. Yes. And your parents have no clue, so they tell Uncle Paul to drive you to the emergency room. Of course. He, t he fell down the steps. <laughs> And his skate went into his hiney. <laughs> Roller skate. <laughs> yeah. Repeatedly, he Repeatedly. said. Yeah, apparently so. There was some kind of tapioca on the skate. <laughs> Got all over little Teddy's backside. <laughs> little freckled backside, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. That Teddy sure was cute. Must be why he has such a nervous stomach. Yeah, he would always do that. He would always, I'd come in and tuck him in, I'd hear... <laughs> Smell like spurled milk. <laughs> spurled. Sometimes I couldn't even keep a heart on. <laughs> yeah, that was Ted's defense. Uh, right. His Uncle Paul's advances. Like a skunk. <laughs> yeah. Ted's check was like a skunk. I don't know what happened out here. As the door was opening, in my hiding, would just start firing out bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's supposed to be cheetah, cheetah, pumpkin eater. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, Uncle Paul. Sure. Halloween's coming up, Uncle Paul. Oh, I know it is. Hey, look at this. It's a snake hiding in denim again. <laughs> <laughs> is that the scariest thing at your house, Uncle yeah, Paul? Yeah, look at that. It's the big snake with the smelly onions. <laughs> It's the snake wearing the the hairy white wig <laughs> and the two onions. Hairy white wig. Because <laughs> Uncle Paul's old. <laughs> He's it's, got a hairy oh, white yeah. wig. <laughs> hey, Holy look, it's the snake wearing the salt and pepper wig, <laughs> lugging two onions. Look at kiss the magic onions. <laughs> They're full of candy. <laughs> kiss the onions. <laughs> Happy halloween uh, <laughs> Trick or treat, right? Yeah, come yeah. here. Get in here. I'll give you some tricks. Uh, a little treat. Here, here, I'll put the candy back there. Oh, okay. Let me get in there. Make <laughs> I don't have no candy in there, Uncle Paul. Yeah, but I got to check. <laughs> <laughs> you check the little child for some candy? Yeah, you got to open it up real good. and you uh, Oh, uh, God, stop it. You wet wow. your finger. Uh, wow. <laughs> Oh, he's slobbering on his finger. Sure, you get in there. You go, ch -ch 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 -ch. quiet, quiet. Let Uncle Paul do a search. Oh, Put some candy in here for you. <laughs> Make sure you don't have no candy. You know what fits in really good, Uncle Paul? Those candy corns. <laughs> They're tapered. Yeah, he used them as a test of candy. <laughs> I don't have no candy in there, Uncle Paul. Yeah, but I got to check. Oh, Little Halloween fibber. <laughs> terrible. Just terrible. <laughs> oh God! Give me a Timothy. Can't believe it's that time of year again. Well, Coming yeah. up? Not really. We got a month. It's still like close enough. It's getting there. It'll go in no time. True. I'll be back to having the goddamn inner city kids bust into my neighborhood to 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 do the arm swipe on my candy tray. Tape it do. this year. I will. I'm going to put a camera right at the door, and get, you'll see. Get your fucking uh, droid thing there. So the little white the kids. They take the little white kids around the neighborhood, right? Yeah. And then and then they uh, they take, thank you, and they take one or two. And sometimes I even say, oh, take a little more. It's okay. And the parents are like, what do you say? Thank you. The black kids, they have no costume. They're just, like, shaking you down. <laughs> Trick or treat. And you put the tray out. Literally, they take a hooded arm sleeve <laughs> and fucking wham! Like they're clearing a fucking table. It's amazing. I'm like, oh, great. I'll refill this again. I don't believe it. The next you. shakedown. <laughs> You film it or it didn't happen. All right. I'll do it. Hey, what do you got, first oh, of all? Danny yes, ran in, so he's Danny got something on the Halloween plus, candy. But uh, I just want to say, hey, you should be using your uh, your new copters to scare the That's shit right. out of kids. I, I was just going to say that. with yeah. the helicopter. Yeah. Either give him candy or scare the fucking bejesus out of I'll him. I'll have it loiter over the house. Yeah, and with the camera, you can film everybody's reactions. Swipe down on him. Can't you talk yeah. through that, too? No, not yet. Oh, not yet. Be cool. I, oh that would be kind of from cool. the sky. Hey, well, you what are you doing? You could probably rip something up. Clear the area, citizen. 
<laughs> you ever do this? You ever you oh, ever no. stand in your hallway with the door closed and yell, Oh no, all the candy's falling and when they look through the little lettuce slot, you're playing with your peanut. <laughs> <laughs> they look through the letter slot. <laughs> what the kids do? Yeah, when you go, oh no, there's more candy than I ever seen. <laughs> and they look through the letter slot, and you're standing right there. <laughs> and you can't get an erection because of your goddamn medication. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you're, you're pulling it as hard as you can, though. <laughs> Salt and pepper wig. <laughs> kids think I got hot Turkish taffy in my yeah, hand. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> Here's it's a little this. treat for you. And they don't see no candy. They just see uh, newspapers scattered uh, on the floor. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Sometimes you yell, oh, oh, no, the cookie monster's here. And then they look through the letter thing, and you spray them. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. The cookie monster threw up on me. Yeah. <laughs> well, Oh no, all them Muppets are in here. And then they peek through, and you just grab their little fingers and you rub it on their fingers. <laughs> Touch this. I'm going to tell your father you was misbehaving. And you open the door and you give him a kiss. Oh, shit. Here's a, here's a, here's a Christmas uh. kiss. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's fucking. <laughs> oh, that's so uh. just disturbing. Yeah, you are Shouldn't disturbing. I'm sorry, Uncle Paul. It's just a, uh, there's a way to do things and a, a way not to. And if you're Lyle, don't go for you. A Lyle Chip Chipperson? Yeah. yeah. Love that guy. because I believe right. that being alone is fine. Yeah. Uh, I, Rocco, i got to put you on the on hold for one second. We got, um, we got a guy named Paul on the line. Uh, hold on, Rocco, please. Amber, stay there, please. Okay. This guy uh, has a very good uh, uh, question. Paul, uh, Paul Hargis. Hi, Paul. Hi. Is this Amber? Uh, yes. Hi, Paul. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm, I, I'm known as Uncle Paul. I have kind of a children's show I do. And I've been looking to meet someone to date for a while, but I'm an average, I'm 57 years young. Okay. <laughs> and I want to meet somebody to go out with, you know. Are you looking for a relationship or just someone to go out with? I think, a, rela ready I think for a, relationship? a relationship because I really have had a lot of misunderstandings and things of that nature. So I would like to have like a special someone. But I don't know how to go about doing it because the police keep coming. The police keep coming. Uh, but now, what do I have to do to meet? The, what's that? What is it that you're doing that is drawing the police attention? Oh, I don't know. It's just a whole persecution thing. So, do you hook up people from different, like, religious backgrounds and age groups, things of that nature? Uh, of course, matchmaking always looks at religion. We look at background, education, how old you are. Uh, we also look I'm at 57 years. <laughs> Hey, Amber, I, I I think what Paul's getting at, he he's looking for a younger uh, a younger yeah, date. Yeah, you know, a little you, younger. You know how Amber, the older women, gentlemen like uh, younger women. Uh, women in my age. I've, I've heard of that. Okay. I've heard of that. Um, well, Paul, per perhaps maybe you could try um, some. Oh God, I didn't get finished explaining. Oh, I'm sorry. Please finish. Somebody in my age group doesn't understand me. I'm 57 years young. I want somebody who's who's much younger, who's youthful, has a, a fun outlook on life. But I feel that everybody I meet is a bunch of old ladies. Well, well, I don't like women to be that old. They don't understand fun. Okay, well, I'm sorry about that. Uh, what's I that? that Why are you laughing women. at me? Well, I think that there's plenty of women that are chronologically more mature, but emotionally, they're still kids. And I think that you Yay. just need somebody to help you find them. <laughs> Paul. I like that because yeah. I like to go out and have fun and go to the park and roll a ball and do things of that nature. I have a, I have a I'm have not done saying nothing. Okay, you can go ahead and finish. I just want somebody who's youthful. Got it. And it's very hard to find because nobody understands. 
Well, I think there'd be plenty of people that understand. I have an entrepreneur who's in his 60s, and one of the things that he does on his spare time is he flies his jets to the different roller coasters. Ah, huh? he plays for the jets? Does he what? He plays for the New York Jets? No, he flies his jets to the, all the different uh, parks around the country and goes on all the roller coasters. I don't fly no planes. My wife died in a fire. From we a plane? We estranged. How long a big ago? insurance settlement. What's that? How long ago? Two weeks. <laughs> uh, we Amber. We estranged for a while. Yeah? We were separated Are you going to rescue long, me? Long, long... <laughs> No, I don't know why you're laughing. This is this is real. That's that's why we put Paul on the on the line. He My lost wife his wife two weeks away, ago. But we were separated for five or six years. Okay, before she passed away in the fire. She no, the fire happened a while ago. She passed away about two weeks ago. But the fire <laughs> happened about I'd, I'd say three months ago, maybe three and a half months. And the fire had something to do with the plane. No, I don't, what are you talking about? That's the other man. That's the other man. You're humiliating me. I see. Okay, well, how do you have... Would you like to ask me a specific question that maybe I can help you answer? Are you looking to have somebody help you find this elusive woman? Huh? Are you, would you like help finding this elusive woman? Yeah, a girl. Okay, and where do you live? What's that? Where do you live? I live in uh, Nantucket. In Nantucket? Okay, okay. Well, I'm sure that I could give you uh, a phone number off the air if you'd like, and we could perhaps set up a personal meeting. Could you get me somebody who will... I, because the law says that people shouldn't be together at certain ages. I don't agree. Well, my, my women that are young, uh, they've got it, pr it pretty much together. They have their careers, and they're not really looking for... Careers? Anybody to take care of them financially. Do you so have any students? No, I don't work with students. Most of the women start around 25, 26 on up. Oh, that's sometimes, so good. Sometimes that's they're younger, but they're going to be looking for men that are probably with I can't hear you. Days. You keep talking over me. That's way too old. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not kidding. No, I believe you, but that's why I think perhaps maybe you should try online dating because you can use... I tried the chat rooms. Half the time, it's not even the people they say they are. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. There's a lot of mis representation god damn fbi well what would you like me to do paul huh? what would you like me to do for you find me somebody who's compatible who likes an older gentleman well one of the things that you could do is send me some pictures of some of the women that you've dated in the past every time i do that i get in trouble well i might not be the right service for you but i'd like to help you out did you give somebody a phone number? I don't mean to interrupt your calls, but I've really been struggling well, being an single for all these remember. What? I have an easy number for you to remember. What's the number? It's 1-800-401-1-1-K. Okay. Hold on, I'm getting a pen. It's what? You, I'm getting a pen. You're you might not need one. It's pretty easy. Oh, uh, 1 800 what? 401 match. Okay. 401 match. The area code's 401? No, that's the prefix. The area code is 800. It's an 800 line. All right. And then it's 401 match, like a 401K or 41 match, but it's, there's an O in the middle. So 1 800. Or a 4, like 4 years old, and then a 0 years old, and then a 1 year old. Yeah, 3 up to 5. It <laughs> might, <laughs> might be hitting your limit there. <laughs> <laughs> that was not really appropriate. I'm sorry. All right, well, I guess so. And you can call me during the week right. or after the show if you'd like, and we yeah. can start with getting to know more about you. Yeah, sometimes you want someone to step in, but the host just kind of leave you swinging. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that I can help I wish you that one was glued to pal talk. <laughs> well, don't we all, Bob? What are you going to do? All right, Paul. Yeah. Well, Thanks, Paul. Yeah, there's uh, Uncle Paul, everyone, and uh, Amber. Yeah, that's a that's a real deal going on with that Uncle Paul. Oh, Very absolutely. frustrated. Hey, uh, Jimmy, I just got word that Uncle Paul is uh, in the stall next to you. Well, you know what I do. Hey, Paul. Hi, hi, guys. I uh, I remember one time TJ was having problems making. So what you got to do sometimes is you got to go in there and uh, 
got to loosen the stool up. And uh, if you apply a little castor oil to your finger, <laughs> castor oil works nicely. Old-time remedies. Yeah, you put some castor oil on your finger. Uh-huh. And you put it up there and you loosen it up a little bit. Helps everybody along, you know. <laughs> Help TJ go to bedroom nicely. <laughs> uh, thank you, Uncle Paul, for the... Uh, you the help. You're welcome. Jimmy, you heard that? Yes. All right, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's in the other stall. All right, should we take a break, Jim? Oh, did I hear a little something there? That was just the newspaper turning. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's reading. Yeah. He needs to read. Uncle Paul, you sound bored in the stall there. I already got this issue. It's the Nambla Quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> I got this one ready. It's got that Wilkins boy on the cover. <laughs> Wilkins boy. I don't like his hair. He has hair like Adam Rich in Eight is Enough. <laughs> Jimmy, anything? No, I'm just reading about this uh, Beauty and the Beast. I now want to go see this play. I like this guy. Oh, you like the guy? He's a go-getter. He's claiming yeah. that she came on to him, by the way. Hey. you got to think if they were laying in the same bed. Yeah, they're yeah. kissing. That's kind of the point of no return. Sure. She's 15. You know, I'm going to sound like a, a pervert here, but there are some 15-year-old girls that look a lot older. There are some 15-year-old girls that look, you know, 12. But there are some 15-year-old girls that look like they're 19. Sure. Right. Sure. Look who's agreeing with me. Oh, boy. Uncle Paul's still in the shitting stall. Uncle Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle and, Paul. And, and he's the one that wants the 15-year-old that looks like the 12-year-old. I uh, I had a similar situation. Did you, Uncle Paul? A lot of times they come on here. Yeah, you're powerless to stop what nature says you should do. I was a Santa Claus. I was playing Santa Claus in the department store. <laughs> Santa Claus, yeah. And... I, this uh, little girl, you know, she was on my lap asking for gifts. I think she said, I want my grandmama back. Oh. And uh, <laughs> I said, okay, if you come in the room with me, we could talk about bringing grandmama back. Right. <laughs> and? And uh, was she disappointed when she realized grandmama wasn't coming back? I didn't ask her. I just... Left my job as a Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus. The Wiggles are doing the propeller in front of Fox News. Yay! Yay! Yeah, I bet you could fly Twinkle Toes. Where's a remote helicopter when you need it? Right? <laughs> All right. each other. Oh, Uncle Paul. Freeze! Propeller. Do the propeller. I grab it, I swing it like that. Not when you dig, Uncle Paul. Put that away. Kiss the propeller. No, Uncle Paul, they're using their hands, not their penises. Kiss the propeller. Uncle Paul, put that away. Yay. No, that's disgusting. on you. <laughs> to the leaky propeller. Yeah. Is there all coming off it? Look at, look at the, the five people watching. Yay, they're doing a plane. How sad yeah, they are. They cannot get an audience uh, in no. front of Fox and Friends. No. Do the propeller. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. Everyone's got their arms all out. Swinging them in a cycle. <laughs> the Wiggles live. Thank right out there. God, my kid's not into the Wiggles. That's a good thing. What age do they start getting into the Wiggles? Usually nine months, sometimes nine months. ten. <laughs> and they listen to them up till about four or five. The chick's kind of cute. Sure she that is. Hair. Oh, oh no. no, now look, the news people are involved. Yeah. Do the propeller. Oh, stiff. <laughs> How much? They're terrible. We have a phone call coming in. Uh, All right, let's uh, uh, let's go to Uncle Uncle Paul. Uncle Paul, you're uh, on with Russ Gibb. Russ Gibb, start the rumor. Paul is dead. Paul Forty is years dead. Ago. Yeah, hello. Is this Russ Gibb? Whoa. How are you? Whoa. <laughs> I remember that rumor. I was teaching uh, third graders at the time, and they all come in and they said, uh, Mister Hargis. 
What happened to Paul McCartney? It's one of their voices, I think. <laughs> What's it? I, could, I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. No, that's... Oh, they, I, I was teaching third graders at the time, and they was all coming in going, Mr. Hargis, what happened with Paul McCartney? I had to take him in the other room and search them for stolen toys. Well, you, 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 okay, so you're, you're into toys. No, but I got very fond memories. It was just back in those days, it was so easy to start a rumor. What rumor? Like when they would say things about me. Like that I was, that I was doing, doing things. But whatever, whatever you're doing, I, I hope they're giving you salary for it. They would make up lies about me. Like if I thought that they were stealing candy, I would. <laughs> well, whatever you're up to. What would you do, Paul? What would you do when you thought they were stealing candy, Paul? I'd, uh, I'd have to take them in the other room and search them. I'd have to find all the places that a youngster could hide candy. And I'd get in there and I'd look real good. But they'd always say I was doing other things. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I hope that you do okay on those things. Huh? Yeah. So what? What? what the, the the rumor is that you're dead. Huh? You're dead. Yeah. That rumor was really all the kids was crying. Yeah. What do you think of these guys? I think they need to go to a retirement home. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Who's that talking in the background? Oh. Tell her to shut up. <laughs> he's, he's even got a hole on the on the phone. Well, I still never got about Anthony. So Who's that talking? talking in the background during my phone call? Tell her to shut up. <laughs> Now, now, Uncle Paul, be nice to our guest, Russ Gibb. I don't Gibb. like nobody talking while I'm on the phone. Russ Gibb, who started the rumor that Paul McCartney was uh, indeed dead back in a... What year was that? Who's that lady back there? What year, what year was that, Russ? Who's that lady? Seriously, let's go back to that topic. Tell her to shut up. Yes, yes. <laughs> Tell the guy to shut up. I think we ought to go back to that topic, uh, uh, Uncle Paul. Uh, what a goddamn lady. <laughs> Five weeks ago, not to talk I while I'm talking, from somebody, and he sends me a photograph of Paul and his double on the boat, look, going around the Manhattan Islands. That they're on a boat. Yes. Both look like Paul McCartney. I couldn't tell him. I should have to go to the retirement home. Tell her to shut up. <laughs> oh, she, 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 Uncle Paul's she, getting very sensitive. She, yeah, he's very sensitive. Good I'm good. fifty. Seven years young. I hope things in Los Angeles are better for you, or New York are better for you. They are. And Paul is alive and well. Huh? And he's become but... immortal now. <laughs> if you start playing records backwards, nobody's going to buy him because they can get him free on the internet. Yeah, the e CDs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Correct him. I like I that lady. I like talking. I hated her. One time I was, I had to, I, I saw one of the kids took a Heishi kiss. So I had to do a bunch of checking back there, if you know what I mean. Yes, Uncle Paul. What does this have to do with Paul is dead uh, uh, and talking to Russ Gibb? It reminded me of something when that stupid lady started talking. Well, she's not stupid. She's very bright, and we like her a great deal. She well, who is she? I don't mean no disrespect, but who is she? She embarrassed me. No, well, she did that purposely. I'm not a child molester. I don't touch them. They're just so cute to look at at that age, hey, said the colonel. Work, you better go to Washington. That's where you belong. Huh? My you goodness. better go to Washington. That's where you belong. Now, listen. I yep. want you to look at grockmusic.com. Yes, grockmusic.com. You ever been in the middle of a phone call you don't know how to get out of? Uh, yes. Where? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Uncle Paul. <laughs> well, uh, you, be, you behave yourself. It's time for me to go as it oh. is time for them to take me away. So oh, you... Russ, Russ. Two is older. Yeah. They, they, they start. No, it's not. It's they young. St they know, start, but they start, start almost yapping. the youngest. <laughs> they start yapping at two. Yeah. Bam, 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 yeah, you're telling oh, me. Oh, Uncle Paul. All of a sudden, they start pointing and saying stuff. <laughs> they start lying. The first thing they do is lie. Yeah, and then that touch there, and then, <laughs>
Muddy touch there. He touched there. Hurt there. Hurt there. And he started pointing every which way. Hurt there? Hurt which there. Away? In that little baby talk, right? Hurt there. And what, what do you say? Hey, shut up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you would come up with some kind of excuse. No. Like, oh, she fell. She, I tell her, shut or him. Shut up, <laughs> you liar. And what do they say to that? Yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Quit pointing at the front of your diapers. <laughs> oh, shit. Or the back. Or your mother and father. I tell him that that baby's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I was helping her. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. was just sitting there, and I was singing Mazzy Dotes and Dozzy Dotes and Little Lambsy Divey. Little. Little Lambsy. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she fell. <laughs> and hurt herself? Sure. <laughs> Let me get in there. Put some put some Merle on the injury. <laughs> there was a scandalous story the other day about a, a young girl. Huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, she was in a store somewhere with her mom. Uh, you found that one? Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, it, it seems she was wearing flip-flops, yeah. and a guy's uh, uh, pedophile perv switch went off, and the girl is telling the story of how this man walked up and just started kissing her feet, and all I could think of was the disgusting turkey foot that Uncle <laughs> Paul would do. <laughs> the only thing I thought. You play, I couldn't handle it. It was them little tootsies. I just wanted to grab it and go like, you make turkey noises on the arch, sometimes on the ankles. That's that's what uh, seems to have happened. Uh, she she was uh, getting her feet kissed until she she ran away to the parent, and uh, I guess her mom turned the guy in. And, yeah, uh, yeah, she was a tattletale. She sure did. <laughs> I thought you liked your feet turkeyed. <laughs> no, Everybody likes turkey foot. I don't think little uh, little kids like when strangers kiss their feet. <laughs> My toes are curling up. Uh, isn't that <laughs> when he yeah, said you liked that when, when he was a boy? Sam would have his little. Boy Scout uniform on, and his mother would say, "Hey, we're gonna go get my husband's mustache wax. Could you watch <laughs> Sam?" So I'd say, "Sure." Oh. And I'd, I'd put like I'd put all kinds of cod oil on my you know what and make him kiss it, and I'd kiss his little feet. Kiss <laughs> his feet, he could flick a nickel. <laughs> that was it too. He did take his shoes off. Yeah. On public, te- uh, not public, public, on national yeah, television. Nickelodeon, son. Nickelodeon. So uh, a lot of uh, people saw your bare little boy foot. He started that because he used his feet to try to push my tongue away. <laughs> Get it off. And they realized he could flick a quarter with it? Yeah. That was a library, I guess? Yeah. That's the story? Uh, seven-year-old girl is uh, stating, man sniffed, fondled, kissed my feet at the library. Yeah. The How do you think you're reading. gonna get away with that? As a I, know, I know. What, what the fuck? She was reading in the library when the uh, man allegedly uh, came up. She, she said, "I didn't know what to do. I was so petrified." Poor girl. The girl said, "I want him to suffer. That's all. I want him to suffer until he dies." <laughs> <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ! That kid's gonna be fucked. Most most guys don't mind if uh, you know the female teacher is having sex with them. Well, they always yap about it. Yeah, the, that's the, that's the mistake they make. They start yapping, and to then their the friends one nerd it. has to a tell her. Nerd. Yeah. One tattletale. Mm-hmm. Tattling. Yeah, telling tall tales out of school. Snitch. Who's telling tales out of school? Yeah, you're supposed to keep secrets. They're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> You don't go snitching. Oh, oh, he put his knees on the side of my head on the mat while I was napping. <laughs> <laughs> Shame is supposed to be buried. Yeah, he put strudel in my eye strudel. while I was napping. He gave me milk nickels for milk money. <laughs> he put his knee on my ear. It hurted. It's unsweetened strudel ice. Yeah. I had to make its vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> the government has been sending people back in time to change history. Well, here's what happened. There was a picture, a photograph that they were teasing this whole episode of a guy, and they never showed the picture until the end, of this guy pointing at the picture going, this is me at the Gettysburg Address. It, it's the blurriest 
nothing oh, picture God. of him as a child because they sent back school children back in time oh, to deliver something. Yeah, Uncle. how marvelous <laughs> to the first Uncle Paul back in 1790. Yeah, sure, Uncle Stanvish. <laughs> Stanvish. <laughs> hey, Uncle Stanvish. <laughs> What's that stuff dripping on my pilgrim shoes? <laughs> hey, Miles Standish. No, it's Stanvish. <laughs> Hi, I'm a little injured boy. How are you? Oh no. Come here. You got some anthrax in your underpants. <laughs> more, more atrocities for the for the red skin. Let me slide down your underpants and get the anthrax out of there. Oh, it no. fell in the crack. Time traveling, Paul. Yeah, would not be good. Hey, look at close your eyes. I got a peace pipe for you. Oh, boy. kiss the spitting peace pipe. Oh Jesus! The yeah, peace pipe. yeah. You have the spitting peace pipe no. give you a little peace in your backside. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that's terrible. Shouldn't send Uncle Paul back through time to molest children. Yeah, put the pilgrim hat over your face so you can't <laughs> see nothing. Look at my big pilgrim socks. Yay! This um, <laughs> this gent <laughs> this gentleman <laughs> wreaks havoc on the boys, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this gentleman said he went back in time as a child. They had a uh, they had a bunch of school age so children you, you that were time traveling. Oh fuck yeah! And he goes, you could notice in my picture here, I'm wearing shoes that are much too big. Which I don't know what that was supposed why, to mean. You know what matter? it was? His shoes got blood on him, so I gave him mine to wear for the picture. <laughs> Bloody shoes. File trading was so hard back then because there was no electricity. <laughs> I'd say, hey, let's trade some pictures. I'll meet ye by the pub. Meet ye. <laughs> and we would show up with drawings. That's wonderful. Look, this is Timothy without his underpants. I yeah. drew this on a piece of paper. <laughs> Show me ye pictures. <laughs> they um. Let's have some warm ale so we yeah. can breathe it into the boy's <laughs> face. <laughs> they um got uh this picture, and the guy apparently has these giant shoes, big want, big shoes on, picture. and then he's holding a a cylinder. He said. Which just looked like his shirt. No, that wasn't his shirt. Oh, it was no. a cylinder. A fleshy cylinder. <laughs> a <flesh laughs> holding light. it in his mouth. He brought a flashlight back <laughs> with him. Wonderful. Darkest state secret oh. Oh, yeah. that the United States possesses. What's that? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Alfred. Why would they kill to keep this secret? Yeah. Because dead men tell no tales. Make well, that up. What's the tale to be told? <laughs> right now... I watched Denver, The Last Dinosaur. Mm -hmm. He's our friend and a whole lot more. Uh -huh. um, sure did. Muppet Babies. Oh. Yeah, I showed you where Muppet Babies came from. Remember? Muppet Babies. I pulled on your pajama bottoms, <laughs> and I said, now you push like a girl. <laughs> and the baby comes out, and you said, Uncle Paul, what are your fingers doing? I said, I'm helping the baby <laughs> preach. And then I kissed the baby. Remember I leaned over and kissed where the baby was coming out? I don't out. remember. Oh, no. boy. Oh, your little Hulkamaniac pajamas. Oh. I pulled them down, and there was a little tinkle in them, and your father oh. and I was laughing. It's just fucking horrible. I <laughs> smelled your dried pee pee on your Hulkamaniac PJ <laughs> buttons. Sure, I did. <laughs> Kissed your little bottom. Scooby Doo. <laughs> right. I watched Scooby, little, Scooby Doo. I watched watch the little Jetsons. Underdog. Little Jetsons. No, no, no. That, that's like old man shit. Underdog. You know who Sammy used to like? Uh. Scrappy Doo. He'd always, Scrappy Doo would come on and Sam's little legs would kick. Oh. Yay, Scrappy Doo! And I'd make propeller noises on your thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I hated Scrappy Doo. I did too. Oh, so Scrappy Doo <laughs> fucked the whole Scooby Doo franchise up. I wanted to see tire tracks in Scrappy Doo's back legs. <laughs> You're listening to Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony on the virus. Serious XM. It's my favorite thing about the holidays. Like, aside presents and lights and snow and all that shit, it's everyone posts the kid crying, screaming, like just in utter fear of Santa Claus, and I love it. That kid, this picture is one of the best I've ever seen. He's crying, he's got the look of, of terror in his face, and his hands are reaching out like, please take me away from this, this thing. This animal. Santa is a scary dude. 
They have a good Santa at the Walt Whitman Mall. Uh, yeah. But the guy has no fucking personality whatsoever and could give a shit he was really? there. Yeah, he's one of those guys. I'm like, you know what? Just clocking in. This is a fucking moment for us, so could you play it up a little bit, yeah. asshole? Help us out. I was he just sat there, like, just staring, like, uh, duh. It's, it's so weird. Like, when you're growing up, you know, you hear from the time that you're, like, three, don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> and then they sit you on a stranger's lap. Right. And then they make you tell them, like, what you want and... I always Shit thought like that was that. the strangest and, thing. Like, and, I'm not supposed to talk, but you want and, me to, like, physically, and, like, put my ass on this guy's crotch? And, 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 only once a year you can be molested. And I think if you're a, uh, a mall Santa Claus, I think you're a little creepy. I think you gotta oh, be yeah. a little creepy. I don't man. think there's ever been a question about creepy mall Santas. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching his hands the whole time. Because oh, I, yeah. I would knock out a Santa Claus in a second. Would you? Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Clock a Santa right in oh, his face? Oh, hell yeah, I would. But he could give a shit. He could give a shit. <laughs> Do you so, know? So maybe I'm ruining his business. Maybe you shouldn't go to the Santa Claus at the Walt Whitman Mall. That's why he, you never know when uh, me and Ann or Jimmy are out and about. We could fuck up your whole business. Uh, Ryan, Nashville, what's going on? Ryan. Hey, guys. I used to work in a, a group home for juvenile sex offenders. Eh. And uh, one, of, one of the big fat kids, that, yeah, one of the big fat kids that was there, he... Uh, in the, before he got in there, he was a, a Santa Claus, a mall Santa Claus, and he had uh, little kids on his lap for jolly. They caught him for that. Oh, that's fantastic. It's a bunch of lies. Oh, we have a mall Santa, Uncle Yes, Paul? I was. Were you good? Huh? Were you good at it? Yes, I get... was. Now, do you still do it, or were you let go? There was a yeah, misunderstanding. Oh, a misunderstanding. Little liar. <laughs> it's always a misunderstanding always. with Uncle Paul. Telling his mother and father a bunch of lies in the police. <laughs> and the police. They didn't do nothing wrong. <laughs> hey. You just asked him what he wanted for Christmas, right? Yes, yeah, so what do you... What do you want for Christmas? Is that how you'd say it? Sure. It's a little creepy. I say, why don't you leave a cookie for me? Oh, is that is that? It? Would you make deals with the children? Like you'll you'll give them uh, sure. their present if maybe Santa kiss the magic eel and you get your <laughs> you get your you get your Lincoln logs. I never heard Santa say kiss the magic <laughs> eel. Kiss kiss the Rudolph nose. Close your eyes. Give Rudolph's nose a kiss. It's awful warm. And, <laughs> Rudolph's happy. It's warm and wet. Yeah, look at that. Let Rudolph spit on you. <laughs> <laughs> you get exactly what you want. Your Legos. You want your Legos? <laughs> and what happens to us uh, snitches on Christmas? They don't get. They get coal in the stocking. I said, if you go out and tell your mother and father these lies, you're gonna get coal in your stocking. <laughs> stocking. But if not, you get all the gifts you want. Well, either coal in the stocking or a pink sock. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> Speaking of Santa Claus, um, uh, that's a couple days old, but we're a little behind. Here's a Santa Claus story for you. Oh. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, Mom. but he better watch his mouth. Best story of the day. A Macy's San Francisco. in San Francisco gave a longtime Santa the boot after a couple complaints that he told them a risque joke. So here's the joke. John Toomey acknowledged making a crack about being so happy and jolly because he knows where all the naughty boys and girls live. <laughs> but he says he has used this joke on adult visitors for... You get fired for that? Is that even a joke? I don't even know what that was. It stunk. Terrible. Adult visitors for years. Well, Santa wasn't out of work for long. He was hired by a local restaurant for a toy drive through Christmas Eve. He gets double his Macy's salary and all he can eat and the freedom to tell any joke he wants. Great. He actually was at Macy's for 20 years. 20 years, and, and Macy's goes, yeah, years, you, you one complaint go. and they fire him. Yeah. Loyal service. Fucking assholes. This world fucking sucks. Fucking assholes. A tiny percentage of this world fucking sucks, but for some reason they're able to get a lot done <clears throat> with their horse shit. With their single complaint. What was the joke even? I don't even get it. I don't know. He knows where all the naughty like, boys and girls <laughs> live. He's so... Uh, Santa is so happy and jolly because he knows where all the naughty boys and girls live. Which means he can go to their house and get blowjobs and yeah, fuck them. Sure. Because they're naughty. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Paul. Well, I don't... You gotta punish them when they're bad. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. I, I thought Santa punished kids when they're bad by 
not coming around, not giving them what they want, and of course the coal on the You know what my favorite joke is? It's great to be Santa because you can't see when there's blood on the front of the suit. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's red. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> then you can come on the white parts and no one's, no one's yeah, the wiser. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say, Danny. Me and your father had an argument about that when you was young because you had like a little rump roast on your back there. <laughs> rump little rump roast, rump Danny. Yeah, yeah sure it does. Ford had hair on it, boo. Boo. <laughs> hey, puberty. Uh. <laughs> the virus. Serious XM. This is the Opie and Anthony Show. Wow, I'd love to be a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> to the oh, victors yeah, go that. to spoils. Yes, there's little kids. You recognize the blonde on the them. left there, Uncle Paul? Yeah, that's Teddy. That's Teddy and his little brother. I think they're all girls. They're not all girls. <laughs> <laughs> the one on the other side's the girl. She's kind of tomboyish. Yeah, a little bit. She likes to play basketball. Yeah. Have her socks taken off. <laughs> <laughs> you play with their feet? No, you just. Coochie coo, you, you tickle him in a tub. <laughs> You're fucking creepy. Oh, Uncle Paul, my feet are dirty. So you wash them. Well, in, that sounds very nice of you. Get them in a tub. Clean their feet good. Take your shorts off. <laughs> Why to clean their feet? Let me kiss your toes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you are really good. <laughs> It's more creepy than the bed bugs. That's more creepy than the bed bugs. Oh, yeah, they all had to stay in my bed because they all had bed bugs in their cribs. <laughs> in their cribs. <laughs> they oh, said, come God. in here so there's no bed bugs. Yeah, good thing, right? Sure. Thank God. Thank God. Sure. No bed bugs for the kids, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then them goddamn parents are accusing me of things. <laughs> saying, so how come angry. he ain't walking right? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. Bunch of nothing. lies. Those damn Dana tests. <laughs> <laughs> they said my Dana was on the boy's hiney. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, he gets so creepy and then angry. He sure does. I like Rick Santorum. You do? Sure. Why? He looks like a lot of my friends. Where's the sweaters? <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the Anson, the Anson Williams hair, though. A lot of the same interests as you. He looks like guys that do. Yeah. I would file trade with a guy that looked like <laughs> Rick, Rick Santorum. <laughs> he would always go, I don't like the gays. I'd go, me neither. But it don't count when they're really young and you're just trying to teach them. Yeah. We would teach them how to kiss. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, it's so he, he looked like Rick Santorum. Santorum. Yeah. 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 He was always how would always you, talking. How would you teach him to kiss? You got to sit him down. You put him on your lap. You go, now here's what you do with the lady. And you take the shirt off and you rub the back a little. Mm -hmm. And then you just plant one on the neck. <laughs> and you whisper something. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Open your mouth. Do, do your whiskers leave a, a little rash when you're done? If you kiss too hard, sometimes I'd get crazy. And and we would lay on the beach like I was Montgomery Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pretend there was seaweed on us. <laughs> From over there to eternity or something. Yeah, yeah, here to eternity. Yeah, whatever that it's movie. called. Yeah, I would, whatever that I would is. go, I, I'm pretending I'm Montgomery Cliff. <laughs> and I'd kiss real hard and I'd go, ow, your whiskers. I'd go, why are you talking? And they'd say, you're kissing my butt. <laughs> you're, I would say, oh, wow, chip care. I would say that would be a dead giveaway, though, like leaving a rash like that. Yeah, yeah you would say the right thing. <laughs> a lot of parents said that, too. <laughs> what happened to his face, Mr. Hargis? He <laughs> fell. Oh, he skinned saying? it on the rug. <laughs> You're either a really good actor or you had some shit happen to you when you were growing up. I'm telling you. You just you just teach him how to kiss. Yeah. And you got to keep telling him, close your eyes. You look frightened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't like the frightened look? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to make him close the eyes. People like that better in the pictures. Yeah. Paul, you got to ask them. They look frightened. <laughs> <laughs> Holy so, shit. It's so disturbing. <laughs> it really is. <sighs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Damn kids messing yeah. up the pictures. True.
Just really good acting, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's mm. nice. Have you seen that the, the the pervert game show host? Oh, with the kid? kids, with the yeah. Kid. Did you guys yes. see that uh, behind the time? Kissing them. How, in, yeah. Oh, when he kisses that one girl and he goes, whoo hoo. And, he, and, he, and, and that she's woman fucking goes, like horrified. That woman goes, the mother goes, dirty old man. That's what, that was what a pedophile was back in the day. Stay yeah. away from him. He's a dirty old He's man. He's a dirty old man. <laughs> yeah, that was so Stay away from him. Like, he'll, he'll fuck you. He's yeah. a dirty old man. The girl didn't like. The girl was really uncomfortable by him, and uh, oh, then he had like some little trick where he would he would sneak the kiss in. Yeah, he like pretty much took a kiss from her. Look how he's blocking her with his Where's body. The, uh, oh, where, what happened to our sound man? With his big well, helmet. She has cool head? hair. Oh my god! Yeah, look, look at, at how close he gets. Ah! Yeah. This guy is a ghoul. Wow. This girl Leanne. Yeah. Oh, look at him leering at her. He is leering. He's got his arm around her, yeah. No, you don't? What, what do you do uh, when you're 11 years old for a date? Where do you go? What, what, what are some things you do? Where do you go? You just walk home from school with each other. Oh, you walk home from school with each other. Does he finger oh. you? Yeah. Okay. What category? Do you they have the same hairdo. Oh. That's the mom to the right. <laughs> they put it in slow motion. You look like a young lady who likes to give lots of hugs and kisses out, do you? <laughs> hey? Hey? <laughs> Not really. Not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a hug and a kiss? She's, She's like, no. no. Just biting her finger. Right, no. This is so uncomfortable. Even if I say and whisper in your ear that Allison, you're going to win the show. <laughs> Holy shit. I still can't have a hug. That's a good a message kiss. for a little girl. Yeah. Well, I guess you can't win the show then. If I don't get a hug and a kiss. Holy shit. Yeah. Was this yeah. guy arrested? Yeah. Did, it, yeah. He's. He, that? That's a good answer. <laughs> oh, you missed. <laughs> Stephanie, which category? Oh what my God, it's that fucking... guy. <laughs> this guy's <laughs> terrible. Are you shy? He's trying to kiss another girl. Can I have a little? Thing, Show please? is great. How <laughs> Uncle Paul? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, ooh. See, she would get a whole bunch of right answers. Yeah, you Who's bringing their kids on this show, first of all? I love that he, he, he doesn't give a fuck about keeping the game going. No. He's like eating up valuable minutes here. Yes. And he looks like the mom kissed him on the cheek and he points at her like, uh. What did he what did just say? say? That he wanted the kids. He said something about like the... Oh, the mom kisses him. The mothers are always so easy to kiss. It's the kids. Okay, dear. Holy <laughs> shit. What's the history of this guy? I think he's Canadian. Is he, uh, I, I don't, I don't hear that. So right it's perv. They just stamp perv on so his head. Put, it just said ped. <laughs> ped. <laughs> But did did he uh, did he have any problems uh, later in? Uh... Well, the sex man tells me that he used to be a uh, a Blue Jays announcer. Yeah, as he well. was a broadcaster for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. But before that, all he did was children's game shows. This was the children's really? game show, just like Mom. Sure, is what we were watching. Just like Mom. Yeah. yeah. You know what you got to do? You tap them on the back, and when they look at you, you stick your tongue in their mouth. <laughs> Jesus, Uncle Paul. Hi, Billy. <laughs> Paul, I haven't seen you in a while. Sure. sure. Billy's got freckles. <laughs> I used to like to connect his freckles with kisses. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Just, just, Jimmy's just disturbing when he does this. He had little freckles on his backside. <laughs> How'd you find that out? I'd open up his cheeks and go, let's see if they're in there, too. <laughs> All right, Jesus look. Christ, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, and with just, that, she's making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> you gotta kiss the hole. <laughs> Scratch his feet. I, 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 all I want to know is if this guy ever got, got no. uh, arrested for no. anything. No, no, the fact that that guy was like, you he was see, hiding in plain sight. Yeah, and he has like like nine different yeah. sport coats on there, so that thing went at least nine episodes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the fact that he's just sitting there. What if what if I say you, you'll win the game? Yeah, I mean that's that's like he basically was saying. What if I give you some candy? Yeah, he's bribing. Yeah. A, to a total of five hundred and ninety-five episodes were filmed. Wow, wow man! Over, over five years, so holy shit! Big, the moms are easy. It's the kids. It's that are... the kids that are tough. You know, I'm, 
And the face he made when that mom kissed him, like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Old lady Old Brett. Bat. <laughs> Always smell like dentures. <laughs> like when the breast smells like lollies. Cotton candy, yeah. Yeah. Right there, Uncle Paul. Fergie Olver. Who's that? That's, that's the that's name of the name? guy. Ooh, he has a very name, short too. Wikipedia page for, for doing that for 595 <laughs> episodes. Yeah, Likes baseball, yeah. fucks kids, end of page. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, <laughs> how long do you wait oh. to give a parent a dirty look for not dealing with a loud baby? Two seconds! <laughs> yeah. You don't like loud babies? No! <laughs> they're, all they're doing is yelling, Hey, that's their baby! Mwah, mwah! Mwah, mwah! They're that's, telling lies! This is their baby talk for what? <laughs> Ouch! Somebody Putting lies, trying to draw attention to when two people are talking private. <laughs> By the way, the average person will wait 40 seconds. 40 seconds. The last, uh, time, the last time this happened to me, the average person needs to chillax because... Uh, trying to you know, get, a, get the young kids on board. I guess. Uh, That's what you're doing. I use chillax all the time. You do? When I'm around uh, my uh, younger friends. Me too. Yes, yes, of course. Shh, just chillax. Ugh. Chillax. It hurts more if you're tensing up. Oh, <laughs> but they don't understand what chillax means. Their arms and legs just kick out confused. <laughs> my God, God, thought that. Uh, you know what? Uh, did you just do, oh. Yeah. That's the creepiest thing I've ever heard. You did baby talk? Yeah. He does the baby hands, too. Yeah. No, got that, Oh, my God. Hands and like arms are kicking out. I mean, a baby cannot be reasoned with. An infant, you like cannot reason with an infant. You can't sure reason you with can. it. You can't bargain with it. Can't be bargained to or reasoned with. It's a you Terminator think, baby. You think so, Uncle Paul? Sure you do. You take the rattle out of the baby's hand, oh, oh. and you give him something more fun to grab, and uh -huh. they tug it like a rattle. A rattle. <laughs> Look, it's a rattle candy dispenser. <laughs> oh, great. I'm yep. not going to be here tomorrow. I got to go to doctor. Oh, yeah, what's no. wrong, Uncle Paul? Under, put... under my arms, I got a patch of skin tags. <laughs> I got to have took off by the doctor. Oof. There's a cluster of skin tags <laughs> under my arms. <laughs> a cluster, huh? Yeah, it's a, a, like a, a, a growth cluster. Oof. You're not worried, are you? It sound very... No, nah, there's only, it's like a, a raised area with about 30 to 40 skin. 30 to 40? Under my arms. It's like a sea urchin. <laughs> You're yeah. a mess. Doctors got to go in and sand them off one by one. Don't they just snip them? I don't know. I don't like that. Too many. Too many to snip? Use your uh, electric razor or something. Take them off yourself. A little alcohol. <laughs> 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 How's the dating scene, Uncle Paul? It's very good. Yeah? Yeah, very active. Yeah? Very active, having get-togethers. Yeah? Well, yeah, a couple of my friends I saw on TV, they're actors. Uh-huh. There's a show called Dateline. <laughs> oh, well. I don't, I don't think they were acting. They're all with Hollywood stars. <laughs> no, think, that's uh, not acting. That's a reality show, Uncle yeah. Paul. I, uh, I had a little problem. I had to set her out of court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? You want to share uh, the story, or I, I'll have to think it through first. I just wanted to say, Sal. <laughs> Sal. <laughs> Looks like he could be a swinger. Yeah, is that true, yeah. or probably back in the day I was. Yeah, oh, yeah, all kinds of different partners. Before his wife was burnt. Yeah, she got burnt a fire for insurance money, and uh, she was also starting to interfere. Oh. The way I raised my daughter. <laughs> she was saying I shouldn't be giving her baths no more. Am I supposed Maybe to, you shouldn't. I'm supposed to let the kid be dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep it clean down there. Keep it nice and shiny. Right. You, you're despicable. <laughs> well, have fun at the doctor tomorrow, Uncle Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hello? Oh. Hello? Yes. Mr. Mushy. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had the wrong number. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. So, um, you wrote a book, and it's a very, very timely book. Um, and what, what is the title? It's called Game Over, <coughs> Jerry Sandusky, Penn State, and the Culture of Silence. It's a long title. Yes. Game Over is the title. Game oh. Over, man. 
So um, we've all been following the trial, and uh, as close, I guess the defense begins today, right? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. I, they're, they're supposed to rest as soon as the court starts today. Now, uh, from what I see, uh, this is looking pretty bad for old Jer. Old Jer. Uh, uh, now, the defense is going to come out and try to discredit uh, a lot of these witnesses that came up and said that they were uh, uh, victims of Jerry and his, uh, his lust for children. Uh, what, what do you think uh, about that strategy and Jerry trying to use that? I don't think it's going to have any effect whatsoever. Well, I've covered uh, probably 250 criminal trials in my life, and uh, in cases where there's accusations from one person or another, especially in sex abuse cases, uh, the, the time to do it is in cross-examination when the witness is testifying. And, sure. Uh, last week, the witnesses all testified, and I, from my perspective, the defense did not really get into their shorts at all. Oh, I think you're being a little... Uh, uh, yeah, gotta, you got to get in those <laughs> shorts or something. Yeah, yeah. Wow, uh, so... But don't they have the right to uh, recall them? No, not really. Uh, there's got to be extraordinary circumstances uh, in order to get them back in there uh, for the efficiency of the court and for a variety of other reasons. Mm. But, uh, uh, I, you know... Normally, uh, every case I've ever covered, man, they, like, go at them uh, right uh, in their face right away, and that just did not happen in this one. In fact, uh, Joe Amendola, the lawyer for Sandusky, yeah. stood on the courthouse steps on December 6th when they waived a preliminary hearing and sat there and uh, rambled on for, for, for over an hour to the media uh, talking about how he, they were going to tortured as Mike McQuarrie, the assistant coach, who told right. him to turn over the whole nine yards. Yeah. And frankly, uh, I watched McQuarrie twice on the stand, and he uh, he was very emphatic. And the more they tried to get at him, the more emphatic he became. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. The independent witness. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's a double-edged sword there, though, because you really don't want to try to victimize the victim up there on the stand, especially when they had just gotten done talking about their horrid experience with this gentleman, and then uh, the, the gentleman's lawyer gets up there and just starts trying to rip him apart. Uh, it, it looks like he's beating, beating up on them uh, to the jury. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a, a very slippery slope, man. And yeah. uh, the bottom line is, is that if you don't discredit the witnesses, what do you have? Yeah, well, you have what you have, which is a guy that was in the shower with uh, children uh, and very inappropriately. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the way that this uh, thing has unfolded, um, it's bizarre in that Mr. Sandusky has admitted, uh, not only in an interview with Bob Costas, but with the New York Times, that he routinely took showers with young kids. Yes, unbelievable. Uh, actually, I want to I want to let some of the listeners in on this uh, conversation. Uh, great book, of course, Jerry Sandusky, Penn State and the Culture of Silence in bookstores now uh, at uh, Amazon. Now, actually, uh, you get it on Amazon, right? Of course, yeah, you can get on any word. Yeah, yeah. Bill, uh, how do you pronounce that last name? Mushi. Mushi. Bill Mushi. All right, uh, let's go to I guess uh, Paul Hargis is on uh, on the phone. Uh, hello, Paul. Hi. You're on with uh, Bill. Hi, thank you, Mr. Richardson, for taking my call. How are you? Good. Uh, I've been following yeah. this case, and uh, I think it's a whole lot to do about nothing, to be honest with you. I think it's a witch hunt to go after Mr. Sandusky. Mr. Sandusky? Yeah, I think that this whole thing is just a witch hunt, mm. and they're going after this guy. Oh. Bill, have you heard anybody actually say anything like this and defend uh, Sandusky? Uh, yeah, I've heard uh, that Sandusky made a big witch's brew and was uh, trying to feed it to all the young boys. He was hungry or something. Oh. oh shit. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, no, because I, I used to coach at a, a, a school, and you have interactions with the students, and everybody starts saying something, but it ain't nothing but innocence. And frolicking. Now, you, oh, so, Mr. Hargis, you're, so what you're saying is that uh, you were in a similar situation? I was teaching, and, you know, you can't start judging a bunch of books by their covers <laughs> to think that you can't interact with the students after gym class if you take a shower or something. Well, uh, you have a different set of uh, uh, codes in life than I do, uh, but uh, the bottom line is, is there's... Uh, Eight kids have testified. There's Yay. another 16. There's another seven that have been identified. 
Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, uh, that's going to be the decision for a jury to make as to whether or not the kids have orchestrated a cover-up, which is what's ended yeah. up alleged, or whether or not. Yeah, all the same true. numbers. What, what was that, Paul? He has Hall of Fame numbers, this guy. I don't think that he did nothing wrong. I think that they're just taking a whole bunch and making a big to-do about nothing. Well, I'm sure if you talk to the victims, uh, it's not nothing there, Paul. Mr. Peters, why did you write a book about this, saying it's all this Mouche, bad It's stuff? Mouche. Or I'm Mouche. sorry. Or... Why did you write a book about this like the guy did something wrong? There's no evidence. <laughs> well, read the book and make your own decision. Yeah. Same. I just think that everybody's jumping on this guy because he was more popular with the kids, and that, that makes everybody jealous. Oh, Paul. <laughs> it does. If you're a good coach and they all like you, uh-huh. everybody wants to, to badmouth you. Ooh, don't get angry. Jesus. Uh, Bill, Bill, uh, how do you think, how do you see this ending? Uh, what, what do you think uh, happens to uh, Jerry Sandusky? Are you asking me? I don't know. I, I think he's going to get off. We're having, a, a, we're having troubles with the phones this morning, and it's very difficult to hang up. Uh, <laughs> oh, and Paul, no, I want to I talk to oh, Mr. Gosh. Shepard. You don't even know his name. Uh, so how do you see this ending uh, with uh, Jerry Sandusky? Well, I think he's probably... Uh, well, uh, the... the uh, Jury's going to get the case probably later this sure. week, uh, yeah. and basically uh, there should be a. Uh, uh, there's fifty. There's fifty-two charges against a guy. Uh, uh, yeah. I've seen many, many uh, trials in my life, and sure, me too. Just try to talk over, and I apologize. I'm trying to hang up on him, but the thing is, uh, not cooperating. But I, I think that the trial's going to end this week sometime. Uh, right. There's a very little chance of a uh, uh, major defense. Normally, or that's done on the uh, on the prosecution side where they cross examine yeah. people. So, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, well, do you think that the defense has a chance if they call a bunch of professional witnesses too? Like if they say maybe I need to call some psychologists or something. They're going to do that. I ain't yeah. finished yet. I'm saying I have to testify about the lying that these kids are doing. I'm sure you could testify about that, uh, but uh, the you know uh, you're in a situation. All right, Paul, hold on. Let Bill talk. Sorry, right. I got a bad connection. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> now what about sentencing? Uh, what 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 can Jerry face? He can, well, it all depends nah, I'm ta- on what they Paul. finally convict him of. Hold on, Bill. What could he, what kind of a uh, sentence can this guy get? Well, uh, any. Conviction on any of the of the major uh, offenses in the 52 charges would probably effectively be a life sentence for Sandusky. Ah, He's 68 years old, and uh, 57. Hey, could you like uh, be quiet? You're being very rude, Paul. I'm trying to talk to you. Why don't you shut up? If we could get you shut up, I'm trying to ask questions about the Sandusky case. We don't even know what you're talking about. Um, yes, I do. And this man's being rude. Maybe we could pot him, him down or something. Anything just to get him off the fucking phone. We're Jesus trying Christ. Here. We're trying. I apologize, Bill. This <laughs> wasn't even supposed to happen, but he's so fucking annoying. Um, so he could get, uh, he could do yeah, some pretty I hard, mean, hard, yeah, t- he's mean, gonna. Basically, at his oh, age, yeah, sure. At his age, uh, you know, any yeah. sentence he gets is effectively a life sentence. Right, right. Yeah. He's no kid, that's for sure. Uh, and, and is this going to be a, a real prison, or you think it's one of these white-collar places? Oh, yeah, a real one. Uh, I mean, uh, the Pennsylvania system does not have any uh, really soft prisons. They're, right. they're all uh, uh, medium security or above. So, uh, he, would, uh, he, would, he would be in a uh, secure facility. Yeah. Do you see... Uh, all right, Paul. Paul, do you see... Do you see uh, anybody else um, being responsible for this? Well, uh, a, lot of, a lot of blame has been passed around. A bunch of lying kids, I think. One of the things that um, that is very disconcerting about this whole thing, if the charges are true, and yeah. that is that uh, dating back to before 1998, a large sure. number of people in the Penn State community had knowledge of the allegations against Sandusky, uh-huh. and Why? almost none of them came forward. Right. Yeah. And uh, that's the most disconcerting. When you put the timeline about what these kids say. How responsible 
how, how responsible legally do you think these people are going to be that uh, kept their mouths shut? Well, oh, not be. at all. I don't think they should be. I don't think that the, I think this whole thing's a big witch hunt. Jesus Christ, could you find it? Unbelievable or what? I, I'm I, sorry. It really is, and i got to be honest. I'm talking about you. I, I, no, I don't know why they're doing this whole witch hunt. You're right, though. They no, should no, be I, forced to not do this. Again, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, the... Um, uh, yeah, the responsibility. I, some of these right. people seem to be uh, culpable. I mean, uh, look at the, the the president, I guess, of, of the university itself. Well, president Obama. Uh, they they didn't. Uh, he didn't go as far as I think he should have gone. Well, um, there's specific evidence that the president of the university had knowledge of an event that occurred in 1998, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, in 2002, a second event. Uh, became public. The 98 event turned out to be a no investigation. The investigation turned nothing up. Uh, and then in 2002, there's another one where this Mike McQuarrie saw. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's the, a rat. It's a co uh, it, shut up. But it's uh, a cover up. It's it, I, I I really see this as being 100% a, a cover up uh, to try to protect the school's name and the the football program. Well, uh, that word has been used repeatedly by the attorney general's office throughout this whole process. The army got to do with this. What? The, the general. But uh, it has gone all the way up into the president's office. <clears throat> There's two top officials under indictment right now for perjury and false uh, failing to report uh, sexual abuse of children. Yeah. Uh, they're going to trial soon. Uh, and uh, from what <clears throat> has turned up in this Sandusky trial, it looks like the investigation is going to uh, grow. Rather than proceed, and then when you look on the other side of it, uh, there are going to be civil lawsuits going on for the yeah. next ten years, probably. I don't doubt it, man. They're probably going to sue all it, these kids, right? Because they were telling all these lies, and they're spreading this man's not, name through the dirt. They're probably going to sue them. They're not lying. They're not. You think? What, you think everybody's lying? Then sure. yeah, all ten of them cooked up a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all yeah. Uh, cooked it up and then waited years and years to go by until all this I happened. Agree. That's exactly Oh, right. stop it. That's exactly Just stop what it, is. it. They're all telling a You're ridiculous. You're ridiculous. Uh, we got Bill uh, Mushi on, on the phone. He's got uh, a great new book out. Jerry Sandusky, Penn State and the Culture of Silence. It's in bookstores and uh, on Amazon right now. Uh, this is, uh, people are so fascinated by this. What makes people sure. so compelled uh, to want to know all the dirty details of uh, stuff like this? I don't know. They just want to know. Everybody's nosy. They want you, to know. It's, that was a really that was an astute comment. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, basically, th this story is like one of Shakespearean proportions. you got yeah. situations sure, where, uh, you know, like Joe Paterno, no one has risen to such heights to fall to such depths so quickly. Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, university, the pristine university, never been under investigation by the NCAA right. mm -hmm. before, and now all of a sudden this uh, unbelievable scandal engulfs uh, it. And it goes back to the whole idea that it's a closed society up there yep. in what they used to call Happy Valley, and, and it's really uh, a situation where they've tried to keep everything hidden. They went all the way to the mm -hmm. state Supreme Court to keep Paterno's... Uh, uh, salary, right? Hidden, you know, and and they just Why didn't think the outside the would. Would you let me talk for a minute? Sure, sure. Can you shut up. Why can't you shut up for like? Hey, I'm seconds? trying to ask a question about Joe Paterno's salary, and you're yelling at me. I got a bad phone connection, and so uh, you. Not TV. bad enough. Why don't you like hang it up, and then you won't have a bad phone connection? Yeah. Because I can't hear the show if I hang up. And we got a, a, a line I had to call in, and I'm, I'm an expert in this area. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it. Sounds it. You're all being very rude, sir. I'm trying to be courteous. I, mm. Well, you're being more rude than anybody I've talked to in recent That's months. That's not true, Mr. Mushy. And he probably talks to a lot of people. <laughs> Just but, uh, no, I mean, you know, the game over the book uh, mm -hmm. gives a great, very good description wow. of what happened up there before this event, how it went on for 15 years, uh, so uh, and now uh, that it's going to trial a yeah. lot of it. Yeah. Uh, here we are. I'm yeah. back. Shh. Come on, book. Paul. God, man. I'm sorry. My phone's crapping out. I'm all over the place <laughs> trying to hear. So, and, and the culture of silence, the name of the book in itself right. means... Sure. That there has been 
uh, a cover-up going on. Uh, do you just mean Penn State, or is it really um, all of these schools and sports programs and uh, these little almost like fraternities? Well, it's like a, it's a cautionary tale, that's for sure, because uh, Penn State is not the only university that sits out in the middle of nowhere uh, and runs itself and uh, you know, generates a huge amount of money. Penn State's football program brings $54 million in profit in a year. Wow. And uh, it's, a, it's a situation where they were protecting the brand. And you can go all over the United States uh, and find other places that would, pro would, would want to protect the brand sure, because Texas, there are huge amounts Harvard. of... Uh, you know, if this guy would let me talk, I would finish my answers once. Jesus. <laughs> what do you think about oh. the Syracuse thing? Huh? How about that whole mess up there and whatnot? What? The whole Syracuse University. You know, even you if know? you have a legitimate question, he's not going to want to answer you because you keep interrupting the guy I when he's talking. i got a bad connection. That's a very legitimate point, how they see what's going on over at Penn State, and these kids are getting paid millions of dollars, and now they're saying that they That's want to. That's not true. That's not true. What? Sure. Everybody's making millions of dollars, oh. and they up at Syracuse, they want to make money. So they say that the guy did a whole bunch of stuff up there, too. I didn't think so. Well, uh, I, I realize you've done a tremendous amount of research on that. So, uh, sure, the, uh, sure. <clears throat> in the 150 people that we interviewed during mm -hmm. the course of this wow. book. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, a lot of people. The uh, bottom line is, is that... Uh, it's a tale that people should read to make sure that they understand the ramifications of not being doing the right thing. Right. Right. Tell the truth. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, it sounds like a, a fascinating book, a, 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 of a story that is fascinating. I mean, people really are all over this, and uh, you've kind of put it together for everybody. Uh, Bill uh, Mushi. Mushi, Jerry Sandusky, Penn State, and the Culture of Silence in bookstores right now. And uh, on Amazon, check it out. And also, you're uh, at B Mushi on uh, Twitter. I want to know, what do you think is going to happen with this trial? How much trouble are they going to get into for, for, for perjury? Well, perjury is a statute. If, if the government can prove it, they would file it, because they filed two perjury charges in this case already. So, mm. uh, Which ones do the kids are in trouble for perjury? None of them are. Well, who's in perjuring? All, what's happening over there? Actually, nobody really uh, uh, proved any perjury during their oh. testimony that I saw. Yeah. So. Who's perjuring stuff? <clears throat> Paul. <laughs> en enough. This makes great radio, though. Right? Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> certainly. Great. With, uh, uh, well, you know, I appreciate you calling the show. It's good to hear you. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, Bill. Uh, thanks so much for for calling in. I yeah, apologize. I, I like to listen. Not you. I apologize for uh, Mr. Um, Just Hart remember the Hart name is Game Over. <laughs> yes, Game Over. Jerry Sandusky, yeah, Penn State, sure. and the Culture of Silence. Then we'll see what happens. Right oh. All right, uh, Paul. And Bill, th thank you so much, Bill. Uh, good luck with the book. Thank uh, you, man. I have to thank you. Call me. Sure, you're welcome. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, take it easy, man. Bye. All right, that's uh, no. Bill Mushi. Yes. All right, Paul. Paul Harkins. <laughs> Holy shit. Guys. <laughs> He was getting so annoyed when you just going, ha, yeah, sure, in the background. He was so annoyed with you. If you just shut up and let me, let me talk. Was it, did it seem distracting? Oh, it was so uncomfortable, man. <laughs> and then mid-sentence of his, you go, oh, there you go, I'm back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm back. And you're answering his questions. You're a dick. Oh, it's fucking great. No problem. I like uh, to listen. I love. Yeah, no problem. I like to listen. <laughs> ha. All oh. right. No, not asking you. Uh, well, you know, why don't we let the uh, people roll that around in their mouth a little? We'll take a little break and uh, be back in a few. <laughs> Serious XM. Serious XM. This is the Opie and Anthony Show. That fucking better story, though. Fuck. It's, it's just going to annoy me all day. Because it's just innocent fucking kids. That are pushed into the church. Oh, I thought you meant the blabbermouth. Yeah. <laughs> Just innocence. Yeah. Taken away from them. Well, someone's got to do it.
<laughs> I know. If it's not him, it'll be Ant in five years. <laughs> <laughs> five. When they're almost legal, right? Eh? <laughs> Depending on the state. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, check, I think every, laws. everybody needs to relax and take a deep breath. <laughs> Stop judging everybody. <laughs> good good uh, suggestion there, Uncle Paul. You don't know all the facts till they come out. Why, why the anger? Because I've been accused falsely. Falsely? How many times? 37. <laughs> 37 <laughs> false times? A bunch of liars. Oh, he was cupping my private area, putting saliva in his hand and going, Saliva. Zugga, zugga, zugga. Oh, God. God. I oh. was not. My hands are naturally clammy due to my diabetes medication. <laughs> he stole something. I was checking him. You check a lot of people that you believe are I, thieves. Yes, I do. You ever do. find any stolen goods? No, they're all so clever. <laughs> I hate thievery. <laughs> I don't like when people steal. Yeah, because you keep checking these young children for stolen goods, and, and they, they never steal anything. Yeah, a bunch of... They're always hiding stuff, telling tall tales out of class. <laughs> Whatever happened to keeping you... Keep it quiet. They can't keep secrets, those kids. Nobody keeps secrets no more. 37? No, I'm 57 No, I mean 37. Oh. False, 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 false accusations. False ones, yeah. <laughs> There's been some other times the damn judges had it out for me. Oh, really? Mr. Hoggis, we found things on your computer. Who put them there? I didn't. I deleted everything. Oh, I didn't know you had to empty your trash. <laughs> Just pulls into the trash. <laughs> Leaves his illegal pornography in the trash. I would name him weird things, too. Yeah? Yeah. Like? Hoppity Scotch. That was the name of the folder. <laughs> no one's going to find that one. That's what I thought. It's the first one they went to. Hoppity Scotch. <laughs> What a bad folder name. <laughs> I didn't think they would know. I would yeah. put the number five and then Y slash O after it. <laughs> Them cops are good. They do that. They really did some investigation. Why? Y O. I would use code words. Not very good, though. I didn't know. I, I, not very good code. I don't understand computers. Y O. Oh, shit. What happened to a man's right to privacy? Yeah. I was doing research. Uh, it worked for Pete Townsend. I don't think it works for Paul Hargis. Yeah, I told him I wanted to see how much of my own cum I could pull out in one afternoon. Jesus. <laughs> With your normally clammy hands from your diabetes medicine. Yeah. The answer was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> The one, holy mackerel, that jump rope video got me crazy. <laughs> Did you label the folder jumpy ropey? <laughs> no, I put it J-R and then parentheses 2-8-Y-O. <laughs> Two-8-Y-O. <laughs> that wasn't how many, that was the age range. <laughs> Ah, fuck, man. Fucking oh, great. Jimmy. You're Jimmy's so going to be... Oh, Jimmy's oh gonna Paul. Be, I mean, uh, yeah, Uncle Paul's going to make a, an appearance at Cobb's, I believe. <laughs> yeah, Thursday, <laughs> Friday, Saturday. San Francisco, Saturday. they're much more understanding. Yeah, they are. Not about that, though. Did you name Jimmy CD, too? Despicable? I don't like that name. I've been yelled at that. People yelled at me when I was walking into the courtroom. Despicable? You're despicable. <laughs> They would mutter, yelled at me one time in the park. Wow, really? I was in the restroom collecting urine samples. <laughs> For, in a what? Cup. For what? For huh? what? For what? To see if anybody was eating too much candy. <laughs> Dr. Steve, my file trade partner. <laughs> Told me you can check for sugar that way. Take that, stupid. Yeah, he's always talking about seepage. <laughs> he said, ah, Paul, uh, we got to get some seepage. I said, shut up. 
I'll and punch your glasses off. Shut up and send that <laughs> zip file. Yeah, quiet and se- zip it up. <laughs> he would always check everybody's prostate. That's what he does. Yeah. yeah he's good at that. Gotta make sure you're safe. Uncle. Yeah, yeah. I kept trying to get, get me a job in your office. <laughs> I said we could, it's a gold mine in there. <laughs> Not a pediatrician. <laughs> Who's pediatrician? <laughs> He's lucky that guy. He gets the best gig. <laughs> Uncle Paul, a lot of people saying you haven't had a birthday in a while. That you've been 57. Yeah, tell them they're lying. They don't know nothing. <laughs> okay. I'll be 58 in March. Oh, we're in March. I know. <laughs> what day? In March the 18th, <laughs> 57 years young. Age is only a number. That's I right. S- you're, you're as young as you feel. That's right. Or <laughs> or whoever you're feeling. Yeah, that's, uh, that's young. Right? Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that Uncle Paul. Uh, cribs. Uh, Jesus. I saw MTV Cribs. I was so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Thought it was pornography. <laughs> who are these? Who are all these blacks with fancy cars? <laughs> I don't know who this is. Snooping doggies. Uh, all they got the guns. <laughs> what are they doing? Uh, <laughs> Wouldn't have happened when I was young. No, huh? Yeah. <sighs> I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, why don't you go pee pee? We will continue to fight. We didn't lose to proven facts, evidence, accurate locations, and times. Oh, oh my God. Anything can be said. We lost to speculation and stories that were influenced by people who wanted to convict me. We must fight unfairness, inconsistency, and dishonesty. I believe them. People em. need to be portrayed for who they really are. Oh, this whole thing's a big conspiracy. I know I've been the victim of it. They actually went in there when I was sleeping and took my cum and smeared it all over the inside of his colon. I said I didn't do nothing. I was just minding my beeswax. How did your blood get inside? How did his blood get inside your pee hole, Mr. Hoggis? I'm like it was planted there. Another conspiracy. Yes, it was. Just like Sandusky. Sure, someone else must have done it because he can't stand up on his own yet. I don't know who, who took who took his blood and put it inside my pee hole. <laughs> Mr. Hoggis, his fecal matter was inside your, inside your urinary tract. <laughs> Pack of lies. God bless Jerry Sandusky. Oh. <laughs> he didn't do nothing. Yeah. Very convincing. Uh, sure. Sometimes they would even dress up like ladies. How am I supposed to know? They're fooling me. Sure. Then they pulled a wig off. I got, 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 got. <laughs> God, you little trickster. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. The O.P. and Anthony Show. So we got this uh, Rocco guy calling in. Is this Rocco? Let me say hi to Rocco. Rocco. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad. You know, I'm a very shy guy, and I, I really need your help to get me the right woman, and uh, I feel I could do it with your help. Thank you so much. Uh, no problem, Rocco. So uh, we're we're going to have you on the phone with uh, an agency that, that helps, uh, what, match people up? Yeah, well, you know, I, my, my dream is to uh, date a celebrity, and uh, this woman... She she has all these celebrities, and uh, I think we, we, I'm very shy. But if you could help me, I have lots of money. I give her all my money. No, but I need to date a celebrity. Yeah. All right. So what, I think we got Amber on the line as well, and Amber's going to help you get a date, Rocco. Yeah, Amber. Hold on. Let me get Amber on the line here. All right. Uh, let's say hi to Amber. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. How are you this morning? Well, could you? Uh, I know all about you, but could you explain to the people that are listening to our show what uh, what you do? Okay. Well, I am uh, the co-owner of a company called Kelleher International, and it's actually my mother, Jill Kelleher, that founded us 24 years ago. And we are uh, a matchmaking firm, actually the, the largest matchmaking firm in the country. So we're in New York in the tri-state area. We're all over uh, the country as well as overseas. And we work for people that are 
We usually pretty busy, uh, very particular, want to get married. No, it's not a dating service, so this is like an executive search firm when you really are ready to find the one. Great. And uh, do you have a specialty? Uh, do you focus on uh, celebrities or anything like that? or what's? Well, we've, we've been working with celebrities for a long time. My background's in the film and entertainment business, so when I opened up our Los Angeles office in the 90s, I was already working with, with a lot of people in the business. So celebrities and also people in the industry, the entertainment business, so they might be a producer, maybe not, you know, the, uh, well, of course, A-list actors were known for that, but we also work with the, the biggest producers in, in, in film and in music and in tech and all of that, so they're celebrities in their own fields. Okay. Well, with that said, we got Rocco on the line. Uh, Rocco? Uh, what, hi, Rocco. Wait, Amber, you know Rocco? I've spoken to him before, yes. Yes. Uh, Rocco? Yeah. Uh, Amber, uh, nice. Thank you so much. Look, I, 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 I have money. You know, I own a trash company in the New York area. I have lots of money. I, I'm very shy. I want to meet somebody who is maybe famous. I heard maybe you have, like, Denise Richards. Is, is Denise Richards with you? Well, Rocco, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be able to reveal who my clients are, but we do have Hollywood stars, and um, are you in the sanitation business, I like to say, rather than the trash business? I actually have a couple clients in the sanitation business, so I, I know it's quite a lucrative industry you're in there. Yeah, uh, I, Rocco, I got to put you on the on hold for one second. We got um, we got a guy named Paul on the line. Uh, hold on, Rocco, please. Amber, stay there, please. Okay. This guy uh, has a very good uh, uh, question. Paul uh, Paul Hargis. Hi, Paul. Hi, is this Amber? Uh, yes. Hi, Paul. Hi. How are you? I'm I'm, I, I'm known as Uncle Paul. I have kind of a children's show I do, and I've been looking to meet someone to date for a while. But I'm an average, I'm 57 years young. Okay, I like that. <laughs> and I want to meet somebody to go out with, you know. Especially... Are you looking for a relationship or just someone to go out with? I Are think, a, rela ready I think for a relationship. I think a relationship because I really have had a lot of misunderstandings and things of that nature. So I would like to have like a special someone. But I don't know how to go about doing it because the police keep coming the police keep coming uh, but no what do i have to do to show? meet the, what's that what is it that you're doing that is drawing the police attention oh i don't know it's just a whole persecution thing so do you hook up people from different like religious backgrounds and age groups things of that nature uh, of course, matchmaking always looks at religion. We look at background, education, how old you are. Uh, we also I'm 57 years <laughs> Hey, Amber, I, I think what Paul's getting at, he, he's looking for a younger uh, a younger Yeah, date. someone you know, a little you, younger. You know how Amber, the older women, gentlemen like uh, younger uh, women? Women uh, in my age. I've, I've heard of that. Oh, I've heard of that. Um, well, Paul, per perhaps maybe you could try um, some... Oh, God, I didn't get finished explaining. Oh, I'm sorry. Please finish. Somebody in my age group doesn't understand me. I'm 57 years young. I want somebody who's who's much younger, who's youthful, has a, a fun outlook on life. But I feel that everybody I meet's a bunch of old ladies. Well, I don't like women to be that old. They don't understand fun. Okay, well, I'm sorry about that. Uh, what's <laughs> that? that there's Why are you laughing women. at me? Well, I think that there's plenty of women that are chronologically more mature, but emotionally, they're still kids. And I think that you Yay. just need somebody to help you find them. <laughs> Paul. I like that because yeah. I like to go out and have fun and go to the park and roll a ball and do things of that nature. I have a, I have a I'm not done that. saying nothing. Okay, you can go ahead and finish. I just want somebody who's youthful. Got it. And it's very hard to find because nobody understands. Well, I think there'd be plenty of people that understand. I have an entrepreneur who's in his 60s, and one of the things that he does on his spare time is he flies his jets to the different roller coasters. Ha, ah, he plays for the jets? Does he what? He plays for the New York Jets? No, he flies his jets to the, all the different uh, parks around the country and goes on all the roller coasters. I don't fly no planes. My wife died in a fire. 
from you a were plea? estranged. How long a big ago? insurance settlement. What's that? How long ago? Two weeks. <laughs> uh, we Amber. Estranged for a while. Yeah. We were separated Are you going to rescue me? Long, long... <laughs> No, I don't know why you're laughing. This is this is real. That's that's why we put Paul on the on the line. He My lost wife his wife two weeks away, ago. But we were separated for five or six years. Okay, before she passed away in the fire. She no, the fire happened a while ago. She passed away about two weeks ago. But the fire happened about I'd, I'd say three months ago, maybe three and a half months. And the fire had something to do with the plane. No, I don't, what are you talking about? That's the other man. That's the other man. You're humiliating me. I see. Are you, would you like help finding this elusive woman? Yeah, a girl. Okay, and where do you live? What's that? Where do you live? I live in uh, Nantucket. In Nantucket? Okay, okay. Well, I'm sure that I could give you uh, a phone number off the air if you'd like, and we could perhaps set up a personal meeting. Could you get me somebody who will... I, because the law says that people shouldn't be together at certain ages. I don't agree. Well, my, my women that are young, uh, they've got it pretty much together. They have their careers, and they're not really looking for... Careers? Anybody to take care of them financially. Do you so have any students? No, I don't work with students. Most of the women start around 25, 26 on up. Oh, that's sometimes, no sometimes that's they're younger, but they're going to be looking for men that are probably... Within I can't the hear you. Days. You keep talking over me. That's way too old. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not kidding. No, I believe you, but that's why I think perhaps maybe you should try online dating, because you can use... I tried the chat rooms. Half the time, it's not even the people they say they are. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. There's a lot of misrepresentation. God damn FBI. Well, what would you like me to do, Paul? Huh? What would you like me to do for you? Find me somebody who's compatible, who likes an older gentleman. Well, one of the things that you could do is send me some pictures of some of the women that you've dated in the past. Every time I do that, I get in trouble. Well, I might not be the right service for you, but I'd like to help you out. I'd you give somebody a phone number? I don't mean to interrupt your calls, but I've really been struggling well, have being single for all these remember. I have an easy number for you to remember. What's the number? It's 1-800-401-1-10. Okay. Hold on, I'm getting a pen. It's what? You, I'm getting a pen. You are not need one. It's pretty easy. Oh, uh, one 800 what? 401-MATCH. Okay. 401-MATCH. The area code's 401? No, that's the prefix. The area code is 800. It's an 800 line. All right. And then it's 401 match, like a 401k or a 41 match, but it's, there's an O in the middle. So 1-800-401. Or a four, like four years old, and then a zero years old, and then a one year old. Yeah, three up to five. It <laughs> might, might be hitting your limit there. <laughs> <laughs> that was not really appropriate. I'm sorry. All right, well, I guess so. And you can call me during the week right. or after the show if you'd like, and we yeah. can start with getting to know more about you. Yeah, sometimes you want someone to step in, but the host just kind of leave you swinging. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that I can help I wish that. that one wasn't glued to pal talk. <laughs> well, don't we all, Bo? What are you going to do? All right, Paul. Yeah. Well, Thanks, Paul. Yeah, there's uh, Uncle Paul, everyone, and uh, Amber. Yeah, that's a, that's a real deal going on with that Uncle Paul. Oh, Very absolutely. frustrating.